Right then, let us commence forth down the list. Planes, we have the brand new F-16C. <laughs> I don't fucking know about that. You expect me to know anything that isn't World War II? Well, you know it's the new one, because it's got that skin on the back of it, that bulldog. Yep, that's an F-16, and I have no idea what makes it different from the other F-16s. Yeah, well, don't you look forward to grinding three BR-12 vehicles? Oh, did you hear that? Let me see something. Now we can move on to the USSR, which has the MiG-29 SMT-9-19. I hope you remember that, because it's going to be on the test. What are the sound effects are there? So there's the... Oh, it seems like it acquired lock and it gave me a voice, maybe? Is something like the lock acquired? I'm telling you, someone is going to make Rule 34 of this voice. This is confident, big Soviet mummy GF energy. This is like a GF that is 10 years older than you and is going to take care of you when you come back from your mission. She's going to be your lap pillow when you come back from your long mission and you're very tired. See, the American one just annoyed me, but this one, this, this one cares about you. See how your early edition? It's the same as the squadron, but with less missiles. So there's a BR 10 point, I see, so FRS 1. FRS 1, early. <laughs> British voice be like, oi mate, fuck off. You was having a giggle or something, you're pulling too many G's, bruv. Hey geezer, you try popping flares or something? Oh, blimey, these guys are more crowded than your Nance Fanny on a Friday night. Oi, twat, your gear's down and you're doing 400 miles per hour. Put your fucking tits away, they're flapping around. Let's retract your flaps, dipshit. Israel F-16D, uh, what does that one get? Ah, the Barack 2. Oh my god, Barack Obama's in the game now. Whoa! Oh, the Barack has the cockpit, thank you. Ooh. You know, the Virgin modern cockpit where you can barely wiggle your legs around versus the Chad Spitfire where you have so much room for activities. It's the same as the F-16C, but... Twin cockpit, wow! How did they fit a twin cockpit in F-16? I enjoy that bubble canopy. It's so weird how it's just like... A weird freedom in this plane. Other planes you feel contained by the cockpit, but not in the F-16. Wait, I have no Israeli wife for this one? Just the same as the American voice? That's a good question, actually. Would the Israeli F-16 IRL, does that have a different voice from the American one? Whoa, trippy. I'm watching the flight computer. It's like psychedelic, bro. Over G. Wow, so in this update, there's only like four planes being added, and it's basically planes we have in the game, but like a slightly different variant. Is that it? <gasps> I think this is going to be... Yeah, it's that goofy AEA that is just firing... Uh, what was it you were telling me, Hex? It's just like air-to-air -air missiles. That's it, it's just firing AIM-9s. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> me and the boys at the back of the bus. <laughs> the council will decide your fate. And you can see the commander's the one on the left, the rest are all just probably the gunners. <laughs> oh my fucking god, it, oh my god, it's unreal. Me and the boys in the back of my mum's minivan are just taking us to go to get pizza after a soccer game. <laughs> and this vehicle is just firing sidewinders, not even like specialised surface air missile systems. No, they just glued some sidewinders to a mobile tractor. I called it a day. You don't even get radar or anything. I wonder what those things in the front of the vehicle are for. Do you see? It's like they're sort of stowed there almost, or? These are AIM-9Gs, apparently. Where's the fifth person? Good question. 
He's in the gun! Yo, there's a guy in here? How does he see out? What's his optics? Legitimately, how does he see out? <laughs> X-ray vision is a workplace requirement for the gunner of this vehicle. Yeah, that should be right. I wonder how reloading works. So you've got to fire the full rocket load before you can start rearming. Okay. This just looks so goofy though. This looks like if you were like a five-year-old and somebody said make an army unit. This is what you'll make. No, not the forbidden heat source. Try again. Good. G.I. Joe was inspired from this vehicle. Yeah, it's just so goofy. This is definitely made by an army that never expects the attractor to ever be engaged by anything ever. Anyway, German, you got a new leopard. What did you get? The Leopard PSO. I honestly have no idea what's unique about this vehicle. Ah, good old reliable heat round. It's a leopard with a bulldozer. I wonder how much protection the holdout provide. USR TO55, which is a uh, new premium. I see, so this is a T55 with what? Heavy flamer. Yes, why didn't I think to press spacebar? So in your bow gun, instead of a bow like you know, it's low caliber machine gun, you've now got a fucking flamethrower. So you know, good luck any open top vehicles that are out there. The other vehicle that the Soviets got is the 2S1. That is a big cannon. I don't recognize that hole, it just seems comically long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven road wheels. Nope, couldn't even kill the King Tiger after hitting the turret and, you know, the explosion should go down. It's gonna face these things a lot, it's BR 6.3. Whoa, it's got heat rounds that do 400mm pen? Oh, when did they add this graphic to the game? There's graphics in War Thunder now to explain what modules do. Okay, I can't complain about that. That looks good. Wow, it's like small changes like this in War Thunder I actually think are quite nice. Yep, I see nothing negative with this. I see this as a plus for the game. Yeah. This is the round I imagine you're going to be using at BR 6.7. Because that's just going to go for the front armor of King Tiger. Now let's try out the proximity rounds. Holy shit. I don't think it even needs to be that close with this vehicle. Just needs to be the same neighborhood. Do you see, like, I'm not even anywhere near to it, but it's a 122 millimeter proximity round. I'm not even good with AA normally, but this vehicle might actually make me pretty okay at being in a tier craft piece. That is so cool. I overheated the gun now. That is so cool! This is what I want in War Thunder updates. Quality of life! There's also exhaust smoke after large caliber rounds of fire. Really? I missed it earlier. Okay, let's have a look. 
Oh yeah! Yes! So you had the normal like puff of the explosion, but now you sort of got the gases coming out of the gun now. That's cool. I like that. We got the new Indian T... what was it? T90? Yeah, T90, yes. What in the heck is that? So I'm guessing it's like a hedgerow clearer sort of thing, like obstacle clearing bulldozer. So IRL minesweepers, okay. In this game it functions as a bulldozer, I'm guessing though. But now the bulldozer is in the down position, so I can then you know, entrench myself. Got a hungry tree within the Italian tree. We've got a cute new armoured car as number one. That's cute. Look at that little Hungarian armoured car. Who's a cute little car armoured car? Also smokes. Now if you shoot someone smoke grenades, you will also damage them and can detonate them in the launchers. Really? Oh, I want to test that at some point. Well, this is one heck of a goofy goober. What are we working with here? So I'm just testing out. So we've got the main auto cannon. We have lock on missiles. Fire and forget. Fire and forget. Basically a boomer. I'm imagining electronically that thing's supposed to depress now that it's fired its missiles. It probably does that IOL, but not in game. I like how this vehicle has wing mirrors. So this may be war zone, but there's no excuse for not driving correctly. Okay, France got a Lyric. Lyric Azure. What makes this one special? Don't know, mate. Yep, they don't want no RPGs going into the engine deck there. So they seem to have ERA on the front to protect the crew, but just regular grating on the back to, you know, stop the engine from getting hurt, but it's not as important. On. Oh, is that a grenade launcher up top? How do I use it? Or like an auto cannon of sorts up there. I was hoping I could fire off that heavy caliber gun. So normally the grenade launchers are kind of mounted outside of the vehicle, but these are sort of inside. I fired off half of them. Let's fire the other half. And this time it's a different pattern. That is fascinating to me. We have two sorts of fire. I can't control how they activate, but the first set sort of activate in a forward semicircle. So they provide like 180 degree coverage from the front. Like, you know, 180 degrees from left to right. But the second set of smokes activates in a different pattern where it's like some are concentrated to the rear this time and forward so like 360 smoke so I know this tank's probably got much more exciting features than the smoke but to me having like a semicircle for the first set of smokes and then like a full 360 degree for the second pop of smokes that's pretty cool I don't know anything about this I already thought it was an AMX 10 in the game or a 10 something Oh my god, what are you? What are you? You're like an armored personnel carrier, but they stuck a big gun in you. Okay, you've got an auto cannon on top, so that's kind of scary. And the, Oh, look at the barrels melting as well, because I'm firing it too much. The vehicle is so small that even the auto cannon makes the suspension move. Oh god, that's like five angles left and right. Sorry, did I say left and right? I meant like two angles to the right and five to the left, maybe. Oh, it's a missile. You can carry missiles for this bad boy. Okay. I was wondering why I had no um, drop indicator. And that reloads pretty fast as well. I know you've got to sit there and guide the rockets in, but you can sit at like 2k range. And just guide these rockets in. I have no way to know how that French vehicle is going to be, but... It feels a tad too useful to me, if you know what I mean. Like the Fosh, I don't mind fighting the Fosh. But the AMX 10M. 700 millimeters? Fork. 
that's gonna go for the front arm of a mouse like butter. It can go for like two mouses and still go for a third. Uh, next up is Sweden. Okay, it's another Swede self-propelled gun with a comically long barrel. Holy shit, look at that muzzle break. Okay, that didn't do anything. Let's try that one again. That's a very fast reload. Shell 4, much more better ballistics on this shell apparently. So this artillery has laser and thermals. Hmm. Whatever the heck Sweden's been cooking up this time, I suppose. 57mm Savant. I don't think it's going to kill a T-34, is it? Reload's kind of fast, I suppose. 57 mil... Oh, wow. Okay, goes from 100mm pen to 180mm pen at BR 3.7. What? <laughs> and you can also get armor-piercing HG rounds as well. So this can now pen 180 mils of armor. Let's see it bounce off T-34. Nope, it went through like butter. Might even go for the T-44 armor. Doesn't do well on angled plates. Okay, Israel got a vehicle. They got their own version of the Chapel. Well, I can't pronounce it, to be honest. But they got different missiles for it. They have a third type. Yeah, we did all the planes. But then all the land vehicles. Now we're going to do the helicopters. I'm not a heli guy, but let's have a look. See, the funny thing is that these helicopters could be in-game already. And I honestly couldn't tell you. But this silhouette does seem new to me. You can aim upwards, you can aim downwards. No gun? Hey, I chose not to bring any guns, I suppose. The orb is tracking! That is so cool! The orb sees all on the battlefield. You tell it to lock onto something, the orb's gonna maintain the lock. The orb is always watching. to a ground target. The orb is now looking down. It's overseeing its dominion because the orb has a commanding view. Hold on, I need to tip the jet over. Can I get the lock? No, I lost it. But wow. You tell the orb where to look and the orb's going to look there. And the orb will oversee its dominion. Tell it to look up in the sky. The orb's going to look up. The IO Sauron has learned to fly. All of that technology, but no doors for this plane. You know, you could drop a pencil off your lap and it'll just fall out the plane. They have the MI-8, which we're going to see in the Soviet tree, I'm guessing. So let's go to the Soviet MI-8 TV. I mean, I was so excited when I saw it in the trailer, because just look how fat the helicopter is. The Chungus is trying to get into the sky. Oh, I didn't realize there's a dedicated gunner between you guys. That's how big the heli is. I mean, relative to other helis in Warfinder, they tend to be quite small. Look, you got a dedicated gunner. Oh, you can press mouse one. First person will fire straight ahead. Honestly, it feels like a Soviet sort of rear line vehicle that has been pressed into doing frontline work. Yeah, carrying bombs and people. A lot of Soviet helicopters seem to be like dual purpose. I forgot to put fuses on the bombs. You get the idea. It's a fat Soviet helicopter. And it looks fun. USS Texas. Before I make a complete fool of myself, isn't this the ship on D-Day that flooded like... When you say flooded, you think of like flooding the, sh the crew compartments. But it is like the compartments on the side, like the bulges or something like that. Anyway, that's not the point. Flooded like one side of the ship to be able to tip the guns. Elevate them a bit more higher to bombard the Germans further inland. 
Dreadnought, that's it. It's the only example of a Dreadnought left, right? I will flood the side of the ship to give the guns the elevation they need. One million lives! Also, can we just like bask in the glory of the anti-aircraft guns on this bad boy? So we've got radar. Look at the amount of crew on the cannons! USS Texas is the only battleship during the war to serve in all theatres Mediterranean, Sicily, Normandy and Okinawa. A 1945 modification, someone's overcompensating. <laughs> yeah, you can see like AA wise they were fed up of the idea of anybody even attempting to fly a plane near this thing. And just armed it to the teeth. Look at all those guns. Multiple quad bofors placements. I mean, how many of them do we have? One. Two. Three. Four. So eight quad bofors emplacements. There are multiple 50 cows and cannons. Oh, let's do the main battery. I blew balls you long enough. That was a weird sound. It sounded a bit light, like firecrackers rather than heavy caliber guns. So you can buy yourself straight to American top tier battleships. Okay, so I can notice one thing is that a severe lack of the comical large amounts of AA on the other ship. Six turrets now instead of five. Also, finally, distinct US naval voice lines. Oh, I didn't know that was specific to this update. I thought they'd already come out. Moving onwards, Germany's got two new ships. It's a dreadnought. But why does it feel so much more smaller than the Texas? Oh my gosh, look at the amount of secondary batteries. Peak World War 1 strategy. Looks like a fucking pirate ship. The amount of like small cannons going off. I mean, they're still huge cannons, but the amount of... I'm guessing it's meant to be a mine launcher vessel. Like not really engaging head to head with other ships. But, you know, just laying mines. Yeah, you can see the rails for it. Let's see, maybe the, I can unlock the loadout for it. I just realized that there's six sets of rails. But the Germans seem to have placed a turret in the middle twin pair of rails. So maybe this vessel was able to carry even more mines, but not in this configuration. Ah, here it is. USSR, BR 6 points. Oh, pretty, pretty powerful tier. It's kind of funny how like low dreadnoughts seem to sit in the water compared to battleships. Holy moly, that turret is huge! Alright, 305mm caliber, so we were playing with those sort of guns earlier. Only four turrets, but triple guns in each turret. So 12 305mm rounds. 